In today's video, we're going to cover the basics of the cast code amplifier and the Miller effect. We'll describe what the cast code amplifier is, what the Miller effect is, and how the cast code amplifier can help you deal with the Miller effect. And we'll make a couple of quick measurements using the actual cast code amplifier circuit board here that uh, my friend Marcus, EA5IGC, uh, sent to me. Okay, so what is the cast code amplifier? A cascode amplifier is really just a combination of a common emitter amplifier followed by a common base amplifier. So this transistor here is the common emitter amplifier. In fact, if we shorted this transistor out here, we'd recognize this thing as a basic common emitter amp. Now, of course, this transistor is the common base amplifier, where the base is essentially biased to a fixed voltage, and we apply the input into the emitter and take the output from the collector. The overall gain of the cast code amplifier is basically the same as just the common emitter amplifier. And it's easy to kind of see why. If you think about the collector current in this common emitter amplifier is virtually equal to the collector current of the common base. So any changes due to the input in this collector current are going to be reflected up here. So in a sense the addition of the common base transistor doesn't dramatically affect the gain. So if the gain is the same with a cast code, why do we bother using a cast code? And the answer is it's often used to combat something called the Miller effect. So we need to talk about what the Miller effect is and see how this circuit can help us. The Miller effect is often the main bandwidth limiting factor in a common emitter amplifier design. And the reason for that is because of the magnification of the effect of parasitic capacitance. You know, any transistor will have capacitance from between its various nodes, you know, collector to emitter, base to emitter, and collector to base. Now, each of these capacitances can essentially steal current away from the transistor and therefore affect the bandwidth and performance of the transistor. Now, the Miller effect uh, is particularly bad because it magnifies the uh, effect of the collector base capacitance. So let's take a look at how. We consider this little snippet of uh, a common emitter amplifier. We've got some signal coming from some source. I just modeled that as a Thevenin equivalent here, some source voltage and some source impedance. Looking into the base of the transistor, we can see the you know base to emitter capacitance is going to shunt around that. We also see the collector base capacitance. But look at what happens here. Let's say we have a small voltage change at the uh, input here, maybe a small voltage that's going up that small voltage going up is going to result in a large voltage moving down on the collector because of the inverting gain. So if we look at the voltages on either side of this capacitor, we've got this side moving up by a little bit, this side moving down by a lot. So in effect, the current flowing through here is as if this, this capacitor is about the gain uh, of the transistors times larger than the value of the capacitor itself. So if you have this trend this amplifier set up for a gain of 100, this collector base capacitor from an input standpoint looks about 100 times larger than it really is. And that, therefore, the RC filter action, if you will, of the source impedance and that collector base capacitance can essentially roll the uh, gain off very quickly. And to be just a little more precise about it, the amount of magnification of the collector base capacitance is really equal to the voltage gain of the transistor or the amplifier plus one times the collector base capacitors. Because even consider the case where I have a, a common emitter set up for unity gain or negative or gain of minus one. So a, a, a say a one volt change here would be a one volt change here, which would be a two volt change across that capacitor. So in effect, the capacitor looks just twice as big as it normally would be. But oftentimes a common emitter amplifier is used with gains much larger than one, so the effect of the magnification of that collector base capacitance is pretty bad. Now in very low impedance circuits where the source impedance is a very low uh, source impedance, it doesn't matter so much because the R in that RC filter is going to be pretty low. But oftentimes, um, you know, if you're using an amplifier, you know, in a circuit somewhere to provide some gain, the source impedance isn't going to be terribly low, and therefore this Miller magnification of the collector base capacitance can be quite detrimental. So the cast code amplifier helps us deal with that. Let's take a look at how. 
Okay, so the cast code amplifier comes to the rescue to alleviate the problems with the Miller effect. And it does so by reducing the gain of the first common emitter stage. If you think about it, remember the gain of a common emitter stage is, e is equal to you know, GM times the load, the load at the collector, assuming you've got no degeneration. So therefore the common emitter stage gain is equal to GM times the input resistance of the common base amplifier. Now the input resistance of a common base amplifier is equal to 1 over GM. Therefore the overall gain, or the gain I should say, of just the common emitter stage is equal to GM times 1 over GM, or simply unity, or inverted, you know, just a simple minus 1. So the collector base capacitor, like we described earlier, in that particular case, is only going to be magnified by a factor of 2. Okay, So therefore dramatically improving the bandwidth uh, looking into that uh, common emitter stage. Now the common base amplifier doesn't suffer from the Miller effect. You know, sure there's still a collector base capacitance here, but the signal doesn't appear at the base at all. So we don't get any magnification of that capacitor from essentially an input standpoint. So we're driving the input uh, into the emitter, taking the output from the collector. And uh, the gain of a common base amplifier is equal to GM times RC. Therefore, the overall gain is basically, since this is unity, and this is GMRC, the overall gain of this entire circuit is essentially the same as just the common emitter amplifier itself. But now we've introduced this CAS code, you know, common base amplifier, that has gotten rid of the Miller effect. And that has the effect of uh, improving the bandwidth of the circuit. So let's make some measurements on a, uh, an amplifier and take a look at this effect. This video was kind of prompted by, uh, by my friend and uh, YouTube subscriber, uh, Marcus, EA5IGC. Uh, he had sent me this uh, cast code amplifier board, and uh, this is the schematic of that board here, and, and asked me to do a video on cast code amps. So, uh, so we'll use this as an example to show the effect of the cast code on reducing the Miller effect. Now this circuit uh, wasn't built just as a demonstrator for a cast code amp. It's got some other features in it that tailor its bandwidth for the application that Marcus intended. So we're not going to get into all of those details. We'll just uh, take a look at uh, you know, using this as an example to show the effect of uh, you know, reducing the problems associated with the Miller effect. I made a, a minor change to the board here because uh, my signal source has got a 50 ohm source impedance. And again, in most applications when you're embedding an amplifier, the source impedance wouldn't be 50 ohms. So I inserted a 1K resistor in series with the input signal line to kind of simulate the output impedance of the previous stage that might be driving this in an actual application. This could be the output impedance of a, a crystal filter in the IF chain of a receiver. It could be, you know, uh, just the output impedance of the, a previous uh, preamplifier stage or something like that. So. Uh, I just inserted that into uh, the board here so we can take a look at the effect. So the first thing we'll do is turn this into just a common emitter amplifier with a, an emitter follower or common collector follower here. So I'm going to essentially remove Q1 and short it out and we have basically reduce this now to a simple common emitter stage and then uh, you know, being buffered out and I'm probing the output of the uh, of Q3 uh, with the oscilloscope. Okay, the setup here is uh, I've got the function generator set up to sweep from 1 megahertz to 21 megahertz. So I'm doing a 20 megahertz sweep. And then I'm triggering the scope on the start of that sweep so that across the scope screen we can actually see the output of the amplifier uh, as a function of frequency, starting at 1 megahertz and then 3, 5, 7, you know, each division is 2 megahertz because I've got a 20 megahertz sweep across the screen. And so we can see the frequency response of this amplifier. This is sweeping linearly, so again it's 1 megahertz, then you know, 3, 5, 7. So if we look at the, the peak amplitude here is uh, somewhere around 2 megahertz, and uh, it's a little over 3 divisions, you know, peak voltage here. So at 70% down, which would be the 3 dB bandwidth point, we're going to be down just a little over 2 divisions. So somewhere between, say, 4 and, and 5 megahertz would be the bandwidth of this amplifier. So let's save this waveform in a uh, reference waveform here so that um, we can compare it later on to uh, the CAS code. 
Okay, to configure the CAS code, I'll, uh, I'll pull out the jumper that I had shorting where this transistor was and insert that transistor in its place. Turn the power supply off and grab that little you know piece of wire I had stuck in the socket there and uh, throw my transistor uh, onto the board. Okay, with the CAS code transistor back in place, let's take a look at the resulting frequency response now. So you get the probe on here. And there we go. I'm going to just pause the scope so I don't have to hold the probe here while we discuss what's going on here. So we can see a couple of things that um, you know the overall gain was coming up uh, like it was with the uh, simple common emitter stage, whereas the common emitter stage got limited by the Miller effect and started coming down, you know, right after about uh, two megahertz or so. Uh, with the uh, Miller effect reduced. We can now see the gain is continuing to come up and is peaking oh, somewhere around uh, you know, 4 megahertz or so. It's peaking up. So we've got a little bit more gain, uh, certainly past just the common emitter amplifier alone. And now the bandwidth, if we look at it, we're probably about 70 dB or 70 percent down or 3 dB down, probably at about uh, right in this neighborhood between, say, 8 and 9 megahertz. So we've made a pretty dramatic improvement in the overall bandwidth of the circuit by reducing the Miller effect uh, of that common emitter stage. Now again, this particular amplifier wasn't designed to be a broadband flat amplifier, but you can certainly see how a cast code would be able to affect or improve the, uh, the overall bandwidth of a broadband uh, you know, amplifier as well. Uh, there's some details on this amplifier here on uh, Marcus's blog, and I will uh, put a link to that uh, in the show notes below. And so I hope you learned a little something about what a CAS code amplifier is and what the Miller effect is and how the CAS code can help alleviate the problems associated with the Miller effect in terms of bandwidth limiting of a simple common emitter amplifier stage. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Comments are always welcome. Uh, again, I'll put the link to Marcus's uh, blog post on, uh, on his amplifier in the show notes below. And I'll make these uh, my hand-drawn notes available as a PDF, as always. Thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.